welcome to the Jade and Stitches show. I've got a crochet thread collection that I'm going to share with you guys today. I've broken it into three categories. The first category is your grandma's crochet thread. So this is the super fine stuff. This is the crochet thread that you probably think of when you think of doilies and general thread work. So that's category number one. I have category number two, which is fashion weight or a weight of crochet thread that you may or may not be familiar with. When I first started crocheting, I didn't know this weight, weight category existed. And I have to say, it's my favorite so far. And the third category I have today is the, I don't really know what this stuff is, but apparently it's crochet thread category. <laughs> and I'm going to go through all of it today with you guys. So first up, my super fine weight category of crochet thread. This is the grandma's crochet thread that I was mentioning earlier. It's the stuff that comes on these spools. It's super fine. This is what's considered sometimes a, a 10 weight, uh, even up to a 30 weight. I have one of those. I'll share that with you in a second. It's doily making thread. It's usually 100% cotton, although there are some polyester and nylon blends that you can get. It is mercerized, uh, which means that it's got sort of a chemical treatment to it so that it won't want to unwind or pill or have the little fibers kind of come out. Uh, it's generally really nice feeling stuff and you can make wearable clothing with it too. Um, but it's usually been traditionally used for doilies just because it's super, super fine. I don't do a lot of crochet with this stuff and I'd like to, um, but I find sometimes manipulating small hooks and super fine crochet thread can be, um, a little painful <laughs> until I get used to it. But I have a lot of really pretty colors in my collection. Uh, and a lot of duplicates. So I'm not going to waste time with the duplicates, but this is a classic A crew. It's your antique, almost looks like it's been stained with tea or that's been around a long time. I don't know if it can really be picked up all that well on the camera, but it's a sort of a dark antique color. And I really love this one. This is really what I think of when I think of old crocheted tablecloths. It's got that kind of antique look to it. I have several in that color. Of course, I have a bunch of white. White is your classic crochet thread color. You probably have one of these, at least in your collection, if you've been crocheting a while. Crochet thread is something that we tend to collect because when people find out that you crochet, this is the stuff they have lying around often, and this is what you get. I have a lot of white yarn. I have a lot of crew. I have this one really pretty ball of sage. This is a really pretty sage green. I've got one, um, I want to say, it's not really a cone. It's not really a skein. It's um, wound on some kind of a cardboard thing. <laughs> the word escapes me at the moment. If I think of it later, I'll enter it here. Uh, most of the thread weight, so the super fine weights that I have in my, my stash are Anchor, so that's the brand Anchor, uh, Southern Made, or Aunt Lydia. So those are the three names um, that I have in my stash. This one in particular is a red heart by Anchor. I can see it that because it's on the inside here of the um, the spool. I guess I could call it a big. It's a con it's a cardboard spool. So I'm going to call it that for now because I can't think of the other word. Um, but it, that's all written on the inside. So if I look into it, I can see that. So I've got that pretty sage. I picked up several in black. I love black. I love to wear black. I love black accessories. I think. Um, Lace, if you can do it, if you can crochet lace in black, I think you've you've basically hit crochet level 10. Because <laughs> um, as you know, crocheting with black, anything is really difficult, but make it super fine, like a fine weight size one thread and black. And if you can manage to do that, more power to you. I have a lot of black in my collection because I have big aspirations of making a really beautiful like set of thread lace cuffs and collars and other pretty sort of decorative um, accessories for myself. Haven't gotten to that yet. I keep saying maybe one day I will get to it. So I probably better get to it sooner rather than later. And there's another reason for me making this video, which I'll get to in a little bit. I also have some smaller little balls. A lot of these are things that I've picked up at secondhand stores over the years or that people have given me. Isn't that cute? It's just a little tiny little spool. Um, and I love that that's an old, variegated colorway that I think you'll probably run into a lot when you start looking into the thread world. It's kind of a yellowy orange white off-white variegated set. Um, I think of it in terms of the late 70s 
I could be wrong. I've never done any research on this stuff, but I know that time frame in my brain because that's sort of where a lot of this has come from. So if it's come down to me from, you know, family members or friends, family members, it's usually grandmothers who were active making these kinds of doilies in sort of the late seventies. And then they kind of got out of it. And that was a very popular colorway then. Now I know this is a popular colorway again, but it could just be because it's in again. I'm not sure, but that leads me to this one. This is a pink and white variegated colorway that I love. Again, these are all in the size one category or the 10 category, I should say. So the fine doily weight lace uh, category. This is an Aunt Lydia's. I have a couple balls of this. I think this stuff is absolutely gorgeous. I just love that pink. There's a sort of a hot pink, a baby pink and a white in that. I got a couple spools of this that I'm not sure exactly yet what I'm gonna do with. But while we're on the subject, I wanna show you my 30 weight, she says, rooting around in her bag stash. 30 weight, 30 weight, where'd you go? Is this it? Oh, this is it, right here. I've got a couple of spools of 30 weight. So in crochet thread, the higher the number, the tinier and finer the thread is. Unlike yarn, where the higher the number, the thicker and heavier the weight category is. So with crochet thread, the higher the number, the finer the weight category. This 30 weight is so fine, you could practically sew with it. In fact, it's just barely above sewing thread. Um, I'm going to take a little photograph of this run next to some sewing thread and I'll insert it here just so you can see how there's barely any difference between the two. This is that fine. Um, and that is my fine thread weight collection. This is for making doilies, tablecloths, even curtains if you want. Um, I have quite a lot of it here in pretty colors and I'd love some suggestions on things to make. The next category I have is my three or five fashion weight category. This is by far my favorite category of crochet thread. It is thicker, it is easier to see, it is almost about the same weight as a size one fingering weight yarn is. So if you're comfortable using fingering weight yarns to crochet or knit, then the fashion thread uh, size, the three or the five category, is something you might want to investigate if you've never looked into it before. I especially like to make uh, pretty little um, collars and hair accessories with this weight. It's not so difficult to use. I usually use it alongside a two millimeter size hook, so nothing that small. And it's still manageable um, for my fingers to treat it kind of like regular uh, yarn. So I have most of my three weight is in white. I have some in that lovely A crew, that off-white antique color, and I have a whole bunch in black because, like I said, I have visions of making myself something really fantastic out of thread. Um, I have four of these actually. And again, I would love some suggestions if you have any idea what I should do with this down below. Now, the last weight category, and this is this is not really a weight category. This is my own little category. It's I can't believe this is actually thread category. Now there's a few things in here that you could be argued aren't thread, they're actually yarn or a yarn substitute. <laughs> um, and again, if you know more about this, I would love to hear some information down below. I haven't as yet done any research. I do intend to do a little bit of that um, down the road, but this is all thread or at least spooled thread that I've found over the years um, in my travels at secondhand stores or state sales. And I really liked it good price, couldn't pass it up, and brought it home. So I they are all kind of different. I have a lot of these. These are called penguin uh, cardamom bigare. I probably may have said that incorrectly. It's um, French acrylic. So this is uh, a French acrylic machine washable and it's multicolored. You can sort of see this one's got like a green and a white or pink actually, it's green and pink. I know it's probably hard to see, but it's a spun green and pink. And I would put this in a three or a five weight category of crochet thread. I love it, but I don't really know what to do with it. You may actually have seen, I think it's this one. I have some with a blue and pink and white. So I have a little bit of this. Oh, again, same kind of penguin, penguin, this one is green and blue and yellow. Um, I've got a big sort of sticker on it there. These are all from my, my stash. 
Um, I like these colors. I did use one of them in our crochet bracelet tutorial. I'll link that below for you if you've never seen it. It's a great little tutorial for making uh, just a simple bracelet with beads using some of this size three weight crochet thread. So if you have some of this in your cat in your in your own stash and you don't really know what to do with it, try making a couple of bracelets. It's a fun, quick project. It's not difficult um, and it's perfect for the summer ahead. And if you've got young ladies in your life or even some young guys like these things, um, then, you know, you can whip up a few of those and put them in the stash and they're a nice little gift to give out. This one is blue and pink and white. And I have a whole bunch of these. Um, don't really know what to do with them. So, and I have quite a lot. It says here that this, this is a 50 gram ball or 120 yards. So there's 120 yards per ball and I really haven't used much out of any of them. So I've got quite a bit here. I also have what's left of some pink. This is a kind of a loosely wound size five-ish hot pink. I've cherished this. I've made a few things out of it. I've got a, a pretty little collar. I've made um, hair accessories. I've done a few things with what used to be I guess a 50 gram ball of this or a spool and that's all I've got left of it now. So I'm kind of cherishing that because I just love the color. I found it at a secondhand store. This is ribbon. So this is a spool of ribbon. Now this is old. I got this at a secondhand store a long time ago and I know you can get ribbon now. Um, you can get sort of different ribbon yarns and whatnot, but I don't really know if I would call this a ribbony yarn or a thread. It's not really a crochet thread, but because it came on a spool, it sits in my crochet thread collection and I really don't know what to do with it. You can see that it's it's um, it's got these pretty little intermittent squares, I guess, of thread uh, and then the rest of it is open. I can see right through it. So a whole spool of that. It's beautiful stuff. It's all different shades of pink. Don't know what to do with it. And one more ball. Actually, I've got two more here. Got this. I think is this is the this is a size three or five weight yarn or crochet thread. It's got the same wine as the hot pink, so it's kind of looser. I don't know if you can see that it's a little bit fluffy. There's some little bit of fluffs kind of coming off of it. I think it's wool because it doesn't feel feels a little bit on the itchy side, but it doesn't feel like acrylic. Now I haven't done the burn test. You know, you can sort of light the end on fire, um, and if it melts, it's man-made. If it just sort of smokes then it's probably natural. It feels like wool, but I don't really know what it is. But I like the color pink. Again, found it at a secondhand store. Um, and I have a little bit of it left. I can almost see the con the cardboard spool through it. So I probably only have around maybe 20 or 50 yards of this left. Not really sure what to do with that. And this is the one, this is the one that I think of. Every single time I think of this weird category of yarns. This is a pink and mint it's kind of probably hard to see the color but it's a sort of a pink and mint very very pale pink and mint but you can see that it's it's unevenly spun so you have some kind of thick parts and some thinner parts there's also a little bit of a sheen thread of some sort kind of wound all the way through it and it's falling apart i found it in a secondhand store i fell in love with it because it's also very very soft I'm going to guess that it's more of a yarn than a crochet thread only because it has that uneven wind to it but it's so pretty i probably have about 50 grams maybe i'm going to guess around 100 yards of this because i think maybe there's a little bit of it missing um i don't know what to do with it so if you have any suggestions about anything i might be able to make with this odd little ball then please let me know down below and that is my thread collection. I am going to make sure I take some photographs so I can insert them here and there just so you can see a slightly better photograph uh, because I know maybe the lighting and the angle isn't necessarily the best, but uh, hopefully I was able to do that. <laughs> this is this is old me talking to future me, <laughs> future editing me. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I've got some photos for you. And again, if you've got suggestions or ideas about what I can do with all of these different crochet threads, please let me know down below um, any kind of projects I have a few things in mind, but um, I thought I would pull out all my thread, do a little organizing because I am still sort of in the process of setting up the craft room. And 
I don't pay enough attention to my threads. I have had a lot in my collection for a long time. I only ever pull them out once in a while and use them for usually sort of the finishing touch on something. But if you guys are into doing a lot more crochet thread projects, or if you knit with thread, or if you tat with thread, or anything else that maybe you do with crochet thread that isn't sort of the typical thing, I'd love to hear what you guys do with it down below. Um, I'm always up for new ideas and project selections, uh, project suggestions, I should say. <laughs> And um, I've got so much here, it would be nice to see some of it put to good use. So anyway, thank you so much for tuning in today, and we'll see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye, guys. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.